So, uh, like we said, we're ifixit.com. We're a free online repair manual for basically everything. Um, if you guys ever drop your phone, need to replace the battery or the screen or anything, we will show you how to get inside um, and then sell you the parts and tools that you need to get inside. We do the teardowns. We're doing the teardown right now mm -hmm. of the Samsung NX500. NX500, yeah. Which a few um, of you guys are going to, I think, walk away with this camera. <laughs> That's what I heard. So if you happen to be one of those people, you might want to see what's inside. Yep. This will be kind of a first look at a device inside to see what kind of chips are on the board. So kind of an investment interest and also uh, consumer uh, I'm going to get started while you're introducing really yeah, quick. Please. So because this is going to take a while, this is a pretty complex device. So first of all, always take out the battery. So I've started with that. That was easy. And now I'm going to go ahead and get started on these screws. And you can go back to the introduction. Yeah. So Andrew's just going to be doing kind of like the boring opening the case parts that are going to take a little time, but not necessarily be super interesting. Um, but what we're interested in as a company is whether a device is repairable or not. Because if you can actually get into a device and take it apart, replace the battery, that's going to mean that your device is going to last that much longer. Um, if you could imagine um, like your phone, if you're never able to replace the battery, then you're just going to wait until that phone has like a you know, two hour charge, you're charging it every five minutes, it's awful, um, and it won't last long enough. Um, back in the day, you used to just be able to pop out the back, um, just pop the battery out. Sometimes the battery would even explode out of it when you dropped it. Uh, and you could replace that, and that was super simple. Nowadays, in the, the interest of being slim or waterproof or whatever, more of the, the batteries are built into the device, uh, which is kind of unfortunate for us, and we try and get around that by giving you guys detailed repair manuals so you can actually get in there and still replace those. So I've gotten most of the screws out of the case. Uh, I actually pre-gamed a tiny bit and got a look at this before and found that there's one sneaky hidden screw underneath this little plastic panel. So I'm gonna pry that up with my favorite tool right here, the spudger, which is just a anti-static nylon stick with a pointy end and a flat end. So oftentimes we'll see this kind of thing. Um, if there are, you undo all the screws and you still can't get the device open, sometimes that means there's a sticker or a bezel or something that needs to come off first uh, that's actually hiding a screw down there. So that's the kind of thing that if you had a repair manual, you'd definitely know about that. But if you didn't, then you might end up pulling on something that you shouldn't be pulling on and breaking it accidentally. There we go. And this here is my second favorite tool, which is a magnetic mat with a dry erase board on it. So I draw a little map of where all my screws came from and put them there, and the screws don't fall off. So this is going to be the way Andrew gets back to uh, gets a full it. assembled camera. Because <laughs> it's fun to take out all the screws, but then if you can't keep track of them, you have no idea how to put them back together. It's kind of like that model situation where you end up with a lot of extra pieces, and I uh, probably didn't need those. But maybe for a high-end camera, you probably should keep track of those. And since this teardown is going to be like the first look inside this camera, we don't have repair guides yet. Uh, that'll be the next step, but the first teardown, we won't know how they go back together exactly unless we keep track of it on the map. All right, so I've got it open, and there's one cable in here that I'm going to disconnect really quick. So that's the LCD cable or something? Yeah, so that's actually for the LCD on the back here. So that was actually way easy. Uh, we recently took apart Sony's A7R2, and to get that back panel off, I had to completely disassemble the LCD and take it off first, which was pretty awful. So this was nice. Uh, there's just this one cable here, and then it connects with another little flex to all the controls and the buttons back here. So that's off. That's out of the way. And if we have time, we'll go back to that. But I think there'll be more interesting things deeper in. So we can get into that now. So yeah, after we take out that front portion, uh, it looks like we've got a motherboard here with some cables. Yeah, cables and some chips. Uh, obviously, what a surprise, there's a Samsung chip. That's probably some RAM or maybe some flash memory in there. That's good. And I'm going to just start disconnecting things and see what can come out. And most of the time on our, uh, our website, ifixit.com, we've got uh, detailed teardowns. And in this instance, it was a little bit of a fast forward teardown. So we don't have time to do the chip analysis that we normally would. Um, but if you go on there and look up the, the 6S or the 6S Plus, we've got detailed chip analysis of who's manufacturing these chips and like kind of what the trends are as far as um, the processors and flash and different things like that. Oops, there goes that. Are you a little bit quiet there, Sam? I guess so. 
All right, well, I can keep talking. I'm pulling out flex connectors, which is super fun and a good way to break things. And this uses a few different kinds of connectors, which is great, because sometimes it's easy to disconnect and sometimes it's not. We'll it's always, it. yeah, it's always fun when you encounter a new kind of connector where it's like, okay, I have no idea how to do this. Like a few of those were zip. Is that one just yeah, like not, a pop-off? Yeah, not really off, sure. Or? I'm going to take out some screws and see if the motherboard can come out. That might be one. And a detailed repair guide would definitely have instructions on how exactly to disconnect all these cables. Uh, something like a ZIF as a zero insertion force uh, connector and cable. And those are very familiar and super easy to take out. Something we're very familiar with. But sometimes you run into stumbling blocks and it takes a, a teardown or our repair guides to kind of figure it out before the common user can follow the guide without breaking it. And that's kind of the cool thing about iFixit, is that we break it so you don't have to. So we'll go through the first time and figure out where you're going to accidentally cut a cable or where you should not pry. And then we'll make our repair guide knowing that so the next guy doesn't have to do that. All right, I'm going to just pull. There we go. Beautiful. So we've got this board off. This has the, the SD card slot on the back here. And then these are the connectors for the battery. So you can see the, the battery here would have lined up right there in its slot. And this is also the, probably the mini HDMI and the USB ports on the side there. So pretty standard. It doesn't look like they've uh, done anything too fancy. They've got like very simple um, connectors and, and chips, which makes it kind of a nice replacement part. Yeah. Here's a, under that little sticker, that's an SK Hynix. It's labeled ENAND, so that's a small little flash module. So it's probably some kind of buffer or small module just in case you don't have a card in there, hopefully. Uh, oh, and this right here is the, the Drim engine. So that is part of the camera processing something or other. I don't know. I don't do a lot of camera teardowns. But that guy right there. And that, I think, is the same engine that's in the NX1, which is sort of this camera's big brother you guys might know about. Yeah, this is a scaled down version. It's missing some of the, the bigger hallmarks, but is still a pretty powerful little camera. Honestly, this is a much simpler camera than I've taken apart before, so that's nice. <laughs> uh, it looks like the next thing is just to take out some more screws. The image sensor is going to be somewhere in this area. Obviously, it's behind the lens. So let's see if we can get that out, because that's kind of a more exciting part. Looks like it's got a second dedicated board, too. Yeah, definitely a second board for that. So like Andrew was saying, that iFixit tries to, well, we don't try to, but we will break things before you guys will um, so that we'll kind of get the process down. iFixit is actually a user contributable website. We're kind of like a repair wiki. So anyone can go online and create an account and uh, upload a repair manual yourself. Um, so if you have a broken camera and it's already broken and you're thinking about throwing it away, you may as well take it apart, document the procedure, and then you can show the next person how that works. Um, you can also, if you can find the repair part for it, just replace it yourself um, and either use it yourself or sell it downstream and that will keep that device alive rather than put it in the landfill and be much more environmentally responsible. And if you're interested in trying your hand at taking some repair photos, like how to take something apart, showing someone. We're actually doing that at our booth. Um, not right now, but at about 5 o'clock after we're back there. We're doing some hands-on guide photography. It's definitely a fun way to find out that these uh, cameras and phones and things aren't as mysterious and scary as you think they are. They're not just a mysterious box full of magic. Um, they do have components inside them, like an LCD and a battery and a motherboard. Um, and as long as you're careful uh, and have the right tools, then you can get in there and replace things fairly easily. It's a squeaky one. Mm -hmm. So because I've never taken this apart before, at this point I'm just looking for screws and pulling them out and then trying to draw a little bit of a map of where they came from so that when I'm done they'll be able to go back in. It's definitely a challenge when you're doing this for the first time and we are on stage under time restrictions. <laughs> so we're going to try and be as careful as we can. It's 
So we've got like tons of little screws. They're all Phillips, it looks like. Yep, Phillips triple zero. Nice. Phillips triple zero is like a really common screw. That's going to be like if you have an eyeglass repair kit or if you can get down to a CVS or something, Ooh, you can like buy one of those screwdrivers fairly easily and bust into these guys. Unfortunately, sometimes you end up with, like Apple has manufactured a five-lobed uh, screwdriver bit or screw that uh, is called a pentalobe, and no one has a pentalobe driver just commonly rolling around in their drawer, so it's very hard to get into your phone. Um, for example, like if you drop your phone in the toilet, like it's gonna be really hard to get in there and open it, dry it out. Um, so. It's kind of something that we don't like manufacturers to do is have those proprietary screws or like tons of adhesive or something that impedes repair. Um, and that's something we're definitely looking at when we're doing these teardowns is, okay, is this manufacturer being responsible or are they just trying to you know, like throw a camera together um, and have a device that won't last very long? So every device we take apart gets a repairability score. So on our website, if you scroll through a teardown, it'll be assigned a score one through 10. 10 being very repairable and has a repair manual published, and uh, one will be super low repairability. So this camera is looking like it's doing pretty well so far. It was, yeah. I found some suspicious looking pads of glue that I'm going to try and cut off. Oh, that's unfortunate. Because I think that those might be what's holding the image sensor in. Mm. Sometimes glue is used for waterproofing or for vibration dampening. Um, a lot of times there are like brackets or tapes that will be put over connectors to try and keep them secure. Um, so re used responsibly, glue can be fine um, and screws and clips and that kind of thing. But when you go overboard, like with the, the Microsoft Surface Pro 3 had how many screws? 84? Some, far too many screws. Way too many screws just to get into the thing. And it was already glued shut anyway, so you take out all these screws and you're like, okay, this is going to be fun, it's going to be openable, and then it's absolutely not. So you have to sit there with a, a, a hair dryer or like mm -hmm. a hot bag of rice or something to try and get in there. It takes another 20 minutes, so clearly not meant to be repaired. Oh, here we go. I couldn't see from the lights. There's a dark shadow, but these are screws on the image ah. sensor, not posts. So we're in luck. We'll be getting around sooner. So are they set screws or? Uh, these are hex screws, so they're Allen keys. Ah. And did they have screws on in the top of them, or were they just like that? Uh, they're these three guys okay. here. So we've got here. Uh, Andrew is using our 54-bit kit uh, inside the Protec roll. So we've got 54 different kinds of screwdriver bits, which are going to be the most common in uh, electronics repair. We've also got uh, plastic prying tools and metal prying tools. And so far, we haven't been foiled, and we've had everything we need, even though hex is fairly uncommon. Yeah, it's probably not something that Sony expects their users to be touching. So they don't necessarily want to go for the Phillips. Uh, Probably a little less likely to strip though, which is nice. Yeah, maybe more secure. You've got a bigger head on there, so that's good. Apple actually kind of does the opposite, that it puts its complex screws on the outside, so it's really hard to get into the device, but once you're in there, it's all Phillips screws. So their, their techs have... Yeah. So we've got the image sensor out. Sorry to interrupt you, Sam, no but worries. this is kind of a cool part. And this is actually the same image sensor that's in the Sony, sorry, the Samsung NX1. Whoops, not gonna touch that. Uh, which is like a 28 megapixel, and it gets the light kind of cool. You get nice little shines on it. <laughs> uh, and so you can see it's in a little bit of a, a springy cradle in here with these three springs that it rests on, and that's to try and reduce the vibration on it. And there are all sorts of layers in here as well. Um, this, all the circuitry is in the back. This is a backside illuminated sensor. And so all of the electronics are behind instead of in front, which lets you get more light to the sensor, which gets better pictures in low light settings. So I'll set that aside as well. There's a whole stack of, of lenses and filters on top of this as well, including like an IR filter and other such things. Very cool. So let's go back in here to the camera. We're actually doing pretty great on time. Mm -hmm. uh, the fastest I've gotten to an image sensor. <laughs> it's pretty impressive on Samsung's part then. Yeah. So as long as you have these uh, pretty common tools then you can get in there and clean your image sensor or replace it 
as well as the, the back panel there. And so far, we haven't had that many screws either. We've got like on the order of 20 or so. Yeah, that's which true. Which is pretty nice. So far, no crazy clips or screws either. Yeah, it's been a pretty straightforward disassembly. I'm a little hesitant to get in here and take apart the shutter assembly, yeah. which is in here, because that's kind of like opening up a pocket watch and all the springs are going to fly out. So we'll save that for a bit in case we're really looking for something. You might guess, go back for the LCD? Yeah, let's go ahead and work on the LCD now. So this is a combination, uh, this is a three inch ammo LED, it's actually not an LCD. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also a touch screen, which is pretty rad. Um, I see that its cable runs in through the back here. I don't know if you can see oh, that. Through the hinge? Yeah, there's a little trap door that covers it. Okay. Uh, and then there are a couple of screws on the bottom here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with those and see where that leads us. All right, sounds good. Uh, the display on a camera is kind of one of the most likely things to break, actually, when you drop it. If it's not your lens that gets ruined, that's easily swapped out. Um, mm -hmm. But it can be uh, the display. Exactly. So this is a good A big nasty crack on your display repair, yeah. will definitely ruin your day. Yeah. And this one doesn't have a viewfinder either, so... That's right, there's no electronic viewfinder on this camera, which is what makes it the, the more economical version of its big brother, mm -hmm. and also smaller and lighter. Yeah. And having it on a hinge is nice to avoid glare, but anything that has a cable that flexes constantly like that is going to experience some wear. That's right, so that cable is in danger. And part of repairability is durability. Um, so sometimes the glue and the screws and that kind of thing is what's actually holding the thing together. And if you do drop it, it's going to be rigid enough that it won't crack. Um, but we want to kind of balance that with actually being able to get in and actually repair it once it does break, because that's fairly inevitable, especially with batteries, because batteries will never last forever. It's only a matter of time before they wear out. Andrew's using a plastic opening tool right now, which is a flexible kind of plastic prying tool that will allow you to get inside of things. Uh, it's harder than a fingernail, but weaker than your device. So ideally, it will break before your device does. And if it breaks, then you know that you're doing something wrong. Uh, you may need to apply heat or pry right. in a different place. Look so for you screws. Guys can actually see something. I got the. The, else, or the display is separated, separated. There's a little bit of adhesive that holds it onto this tray. Okay. Just fits like that. But now it's still held in place by the cable. So I'm going to go back to those little screws in here. See if I can get some glare on it so you can actually see it. There we go. So those two screws there hold down that little door on the cable. So I'll pop those off. And then we should be able to get the display separated. Nope, three screws. So it's nice that there's actually a little access door there. Yeah, I think you'd still have to take the back of the camera off because this cable connects to the board inside. Right. But as we saw, if you know how, that wasn't too hard. Yeah. Um, in some instances, like in the Nintendo DS, that's a clamshell kind of uh, double displayed uh, device. And it filters its uh, cables. Uh, there's like three of them that go through the, At dis least, the hinge. Yeah. Um, yeah, they go through the, the display hinge, which yeah. is a nightmare. So you have to like disconnect all the cables and then roll them up as tightly as you can so you can pass them through the metal tube thing. So it's like, imagine rolling up a sleeping bag tight enough that you can fit it through, I don't know, a toilet paper tube. A little bit Some, of adhesive little bit of on adhesive. that cable. Yeah. yeah. It's understandable. You don't want it wiggling around. Oh, there we go. Cool. And as long as we're careful filtering that cable through, we won't tear it. I'm sure that this hole here is just big enough. So there's like a little... Somebody had to put this together. There. Somebody or some robot. I'm going to fold this over. There we go. Awesome. Now we go to the other side. Well, this is basically what we do for a living is fiddling around with things in the back room under like glaring lights. 
to <laughs> show everyone what's inside and hopefully not break the thing because we're going to be putting this back together and ideally we'll have guides up on our website for it. We actually partner with a lot of universities with their technical writing programs. They will write repair guides um, for different devices and that satisfies their writing requirement. I found the easy way. Ooh. So the easy way is that the LCD comes off with its own connector on this end as well. Ha, so it's handy. actually an interconnect cable. Right, so this right actually off. makes this probably the easiest component to replace on the camera except for the battery. Awesome. It's super awesome. We love things like that. That's the battery cool. and the screen or the display are the most likely things that you're going to need to replace. The battery, of course, on a camera is nothing. Buy a replacement battery and slap it in. Yeah. But the display, I've seen much more complicated procedures than that, so that's great. That's awesome. So I really don't have to do everything I just did and unfold this cable and everything. But if your cable is like experiencing some wear, then if you the are able worn, to replace that. So right, then you can good. also replace the cable. Nice. And the same thing with all of the back controls. It looks like we can take out these screws here and access all of that. So that's really rad. Very cool. Uh, all right. We have about a minute left. So I think we're probably going to stop there unless anyone has anything they're dying to see. All right. Okay, yeah, once again, we're iFixit, and that was the Samsung NX500. And be sure and check out our booth for how to take repair guide photos and learn more about our site and what we've got to offer. And remember, repair is not that scary. You guys can do it. I believe in you. Awesome. All right, thanks Thank very you. much. <laughs>